Hello, good afternoon. My name is Eli Saraf. I'm an anesthesiologist at Penn State Health. Um, this abstract is co-authored by Jeff Mandel at Mandel Anesthesia Innovations, LLC. We're going to be talking about how to leverage PRC to guide Remy Magalam dosing for sedation. So um, we've all heard of Remy Magalam by now. It's a novel short-acting benzodiazepine. It's, um, it's been indicated for use in procedural sedation. Um, it has a nine to about 20% failure rate at achieving um, adequate sedation and endoscopy and bronchoscopy when you look at the clinical studies. Um, meanwhile, we've been doing a bit of research on probability ramp control, or, or PRC, basically as a proven record identifying and maintaining the correct dose of propofol in dice procedures as well as upper endoscopy. So the question is, can we use PRC um, with Remy Maslam to improve the clinical success rate? We've been doing this through a simulation study, and we're going to be incorporating uh, pharmacokinetic and pharmacodynamic uncertainty. So from a method standpoint, we've simulated 20,000 patients using MATLAB um, and in, using the, uh, the Shuttler model. We randomized the values. The parameters would be within 5 to 95% of their estimated values. The goal was to maintain the patients with, uh, in moderate sedation, so an OAAS scale score of two to three for about an hour. Each patient would be undergoing three different simulations. So we're talking about bolus dosing and two different versions of the PRC algorithm. Um, so the way we, we, spe we specifically dosed um, the study is that you know, the bolus dosing um, technique would follow the product monograph, be five milligrams initially, and then two and a half milligrams thereafter at a rate not to exceed once every two minutes. PRC dosing, um, so the algorithm would not be aware of the patient characteristics and, and the way the original algorithm was designed is that you give a bolus followed by uh, one, if, uh, one or two infusions for induction. The updated algorithm would only use the bolus with a single infusion for induction period. The induction time would be set to a maximum of 10 minutes and the time to achieve the, the therapeutic target um, was would then be used um, to determine the, the infusion rates that, that follow after the induction period. So this is an example of a simulation that you're seeing. On the, on the x-axis, you have time. On the y-axis, you've got the effect site concentration. And you've got your therapeutic window show, demarcated by these dots, dotted lines here. Um, the blue lines are going to represent the bolus dosing. So you have it, you know, it takes a couple of doses to get you there, and then you have to redose as you go below the therapeutic window. And then the orange and the yellow are representing uh, the PRC algorithms. So you start off, you ramp it up, and then there's initial overshoot followed by a maintenance period. So this is a summary of the results in the table format. So we, then we, we simulated 20,000 patients, as we mentioned. Um, 5% of, uh, of the patients in the bolus arm would not achieve the therapeutic window. Um, and then for, for, it'd take, for those who did achieve it, um, about 26% of the time, it'd take more than 10 minutes um, when, you, when bolus dosing versus 1.2 and 0.1 in the PRC arm. Um, and on general, the PRC um, algorithm would allow for more time under procedural sedation, but it also had um, a higher likelihood of of getting um, somewhat over sedated patients. Uh, that being said, we're talking about 50% and 70% versus you know, about 27% in the bolus group. That being said, if you were over sedated in the bolus arm, um, you'd be spending more, you'd spend a, a disproportionate amount of time being over sedated compared to the PRC algorithm because of the fact that you'd be redosing and redosing the over sedation. And all, all things considered, um, you take about three or four adjustments on average I mean, um, once the target would be achieved in PRC. So there's a fair amount of, of, of letting go of the stick, so to speak, when we're talking about a flight analogy, versus having to redose the patient 14 times in the bolus arm. So in conclusion, PRC can appropriately titrate Remy Maslam despite an incomplete pharmacokinetic profile. We did find a higher failure rate in the bolus dosing in this, in this simulation study compared to the clinical study. And this is likely secondary to the fact that fentanyl was often was co-administered in the clinical studies. And finally, clinical evaluation of PRC algorithm will be required for final validation. And this will, will allow for further tuning of the algorithm and improving the performance of, of, of the second version of the PRC algorithm. Thank you very much.